This is the Shapus, I guess, power line for iPhone sent to me by Union Repair. I'll put a link in the video description in case you want to get a hold of one of these. And of course, if there's enough interest, I'll add these to the uh, Go Cell Phone Repair website. So again, if you're interested in this, just go ahead and check out the links down below and I'll keep those updated depending on what sources we have available. So the idea behind this is to use it in conjunction with your power supply to make life easier when you want to A, turn the phone on and off, and B, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so uh, when you are working on a phone outside of the housing, a lot of times you won't be able to press the power button. So what this is supposed to do is allow you to plug directly in to your battery terminal and then use this device to pretty much turn things on and off. So I'm gonna get this set up and we will test it out. And let me unwind these here because I remember them saying that this goes from iPhone 6 up to, I can't remember what, so I wanna see what it says. There's not a lot in the way of directions inside the box. So you'll probably want to at least know roughly how this thing is supposed to work and what it supports. So it looks like we've got, geez, got quite a few cables here. So we've got seven, uh, iPhone 7 5.5, iPhone 6 4.7, see iPhone 6s and 6s plus, iPhone 8, iPhone 6 plus. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. I suppose that's probably iPhone 10, iPhone 7, and I would imagine this is iPhone. Yep, that's uh, going to be iPhone 10 there. So anything from iPhone 6 up to iPhone 10, you should be able to prompt to boot using a button instead of having to short pin. So let me get this set up and we will check it out. One thing I'll say right away that I like about this and that is that they have separated the cables. So this particular USB here has the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and that's it. So, you know, if you've dealt with those other types that connect here and they have all these crazy wires sticking out, it's nice that they're in the same place, but kind of awkward at the same time. So I like that these are separated. You could always wire tie these together to the other cables if you want. Also, you'll notice down here on the bottom of this little deal, they have four different places to plug in. So you could connect all four of your wire sets here and just leave them connected, you know, uh, for whatever, and you'd be good to go. So what we're going to do is go ahead and plug this in to our power supply. I've already preset the range on this, so uh, we'll be good here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this on because one, I don't have my output on currently, so that would be on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the output there off until we get everything plugged up. And the fun part, of course, is going to be getting this connected while I've got everything inside the frame. I am going to recommend you don't do what I just tried, and that is plugging this thing in while everything was still inside the housing. I just about trashed this connector, and in fact, I'll if I take this phone apart too many more times, I'll most likely have to replace it. So uh, what this is designed to do is power up the phone when it's outside the housing, and I'm going to say stick to that, otherwise you may have some complications, and even then, you're going to want to be careful with this. I really should have some magnification here. We've got everything hooked up now. So this is the iPhone 6 Plus display and logic board, and then that's it. So we've got power supply coming through, or power or current rather, will be able to come through this cable once we make sure we have our power supply on and we have to hit this button here. So when you hit on off, that is going to make the current available. But of course, at this point, the phone's not gonna do anything because normally you'd have to go in and short a couple pins in there together in order to turn it on. But if you don't wanna to have to worry about that, and you're gonna be doing it several times, all you have to do now is hit this power button here on the power line, and that should prompt it to boot. But I suspect you have to hold it down the same way you would a power button on an iPhone, so it's probably gonna take a couple seconds. We'll hold this down, and there you go. We have our boot. And once this thing turns on, or you know whether or not you wanna wait for it, when it gets time to power it down, obviously we still don't have a cable connected. So what we're gonna do is give this thing a second to power up. And then all we have to do at that point is hit this button here and that will stop the current from getting to the phone. And that should shut everything down. Of course, you could come over to your power supply and kill it there also. Uh, but either way, this puts everything within reach. 
very easy to get to. Don't have to worry about going in there and shorting pins in and out. And you know, if you've got other things connected to the phone, obviously that can be a pain. So this is made to just make life easier for the most part. So you can see here, we've got our passcode and we're gonna have our home button function still so I can go in and lock, unlock the phone, test it, do whatever I want to, and then we get ready to power it down. We hit the power button and there you go. So you wanna go back in. Again, you've gotta hold it down for a couple seconds just like you would a normal power button in order to get it to boot. And as soon as you see the screen start to light up or hold it a couple seconds, uh, of course we'll have to do that with the power on. So let's do that one more time and there you go. So pretty handy little tool to have to work with your uh, power supply and I will see you next time. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.